Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, Bones of the Matter, where we'll talk about the use and benefits of AI, specifically in MSK radiology. We're lucky to be accompanied by a panel of experts from our platform partners. First of all, we'll do a quick round of introductions. I'll be moderating today's session, so I'll kick off. My name's Jenna, I'm a doctor by training and have spent several years working as a radiologist in the UK. I'm currently a clinical lead for operations at Blackford and have worked for Blackford for over four years. Initially, I started working in the Blackford product team, helping to build that AI portfolio with clinically relevant AI applications. And now I work within operations, supporting customers and selecting appropriate AI applications for their institution, helping them evaluate the performance of AI on their data and supporting them through the deployment and implementation of AI. So now I'll pass on to our partners who are joining us on the panel today. So Gassan, and would you like to go next? Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, thank you to the entire Blackford team and for the invitation and the initiative of organizing this webinar panel discussion about how AI is used in MSK radiology. I'm Gassen, Partnership Manager at AZMED. My role is to build strong relationships between healthcare facilities in the United Kingdom and AZMED to help doctors and their patients with AI. Daniel, do you want to get next? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, Dan from Gleema here. Um, again, I would like to extend my gratitude to the team at Blackford for um, for hosting this webinar. Um, really looking forward to seeing some um, you know, really great content from the Blackford partners. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm the business director um, responsible for business operations across the UK and Ireland for Gleema. And um, recently also looking after product marketing topics um, for Gleema as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel. I'll pass on to Marcel. Hello there. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Marcel from Image Biopsy Lab from Vienna, Austria. Once again, thank you so much for, for hosting this session. I'm, I'm very honored um, to be part of this panel session. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm the partner manager, so I am the the key contact point for uh, our Blackfoot colleagues, the colleagues there. Um, I also facilitate all the quality assurance um, topics, the the contracting and everything product related, and essentially I'm I'm the main person for all the everything indirect sales um, here at Image Biopsy Lab. Thank you. Thanks, Marcel. And Alexandra? Hello. So my name is Alexander. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be with you all, uh, all passionate about AI and uh, in this topic of uh, MSK. Uh, I'm the co-founder and medical director of Millview, a French-based uh, company. And um, yeah, I will uh, be able to present uh, some of the the products we have and my role at Midview is of course to ensure the, the medical quality and also dissemination of the knowledge of our product. Thank you and last but not least Patrick. Hello everyone, greetings from beautiful Copenhagen. My name is Patrick, I'm an Irishman based here in Denmark and I lead up the commercial team at Radiobotics globally. So again, thank you to Blackford, our new partner for inviting us to the session today and really looking forward to the content. Thank you very much everyone for the introductions. So um, I'll just kick off by giving a bit of an uh, intro and background. So as we all know, there are global shortages in the radiology workforce with uh, my home turf of the UK being one of the most affected uh, with a 33% shortfall in the radiology workforce as of 2023. And this is actually expected to increase to 44% by the end of this year. But this isn't a UK specific problem at all. And in the US, the Medicare population has significantly outpaced the number of radiologists entering the field. And in 2021, it was reported that the growth of the Medicare population outpaced the diagnostic radiology workforce by about 5% between 2012 and 2019. This matched with the fact that the cases of some MSK disorders are being projected to increase by 115% by 2020 to 2050. 
It's therefore not surprising that the Society of Skeletal Radiologist members reported significantly higher and more severe levels of burnout than previously reported for radiologists and other physicians. If you match this with the fact that up to 80% of diagnostic errors in radiology are classified as perceptual errors, which is something that AI can help with, and most malpractice claims towards radiologists are related to errors in fracture interpretation, it's no wonder that this um, is a key area of focus for AI in MSK radiology. Beyond assisting with image interpretation to avoid diagnostic errors, one of the huge potential benefits of AI and one of the things that we see radiologists being really interested in is the automation of tedious tasks, such as image-based measurements. And in MSK radiology, this includes measurements on plain film for scoliosis, hip dysplasia, and measurements to assess for leg discrepancy. That's just to name a few. In addition, there's an aging population and arthritis is therefore a growing health issue with one in five US adults estimated to have some form of the disease. OA is the most common form of arthritis and is thought to affect more than 32.5 million US adults. It's no wonder that the assessment of OA on x-rays is another prime target for AI. At Blackfood, we're proud to be able to offer a portfolio of MSK solutions via our esteemed partners who have joined us on this webinar. And I'll now, pa I'll now pass on to our partners to provide a brief overview of their solutions and to present the impact that they're having in the world today. So Gaslan, I'll let you go first. Thank you very much, Jenna. I'm going to share my screen with you. Just let me know when you can see it. Um, so I'll start maybe, uh, I will start by introducing AZMED and uh, what we do. Then I will follow up with um, some figures from our clinical studies and our long-standing partner in the UK and finish with some of the future uh, of MSK radiology uh, looks like with AI. So, so AZMED is a seven years old French company based in Paris. We started by developing artificial intelligence for X-rays to help doctors and their patients in their daily lives uh, at the hospital. AZMED has developed an extremely powerful artificial intelligence software, which allows us today uh, to market our solution in five continents and makes us used in clinical routine in more than 48 countries, helping more than 15,000 doctors and millions of patients every year. So we were the first uh, company in our category to obtain the CE2A MDR certification for Europe, and we are also FDA cleared for the US. Recently, we also raised $16 million to make medical imaging even better with AI, but I will discuss this uh, more at the end of this presentation with our predictions on what the future of MSK radiology looks like. Um, because we don't have so much time today, I will focus mainly on fractures. So I want to introduce uh, some figures and present some clinical studies we have. The first one I want to present is this big clinical study we conducted with our partner University Hospitals of Cleveland in Ohio, United States. The clinical study is actually divided in two parts and it's published in Academic Radiology Journal. So it's available there. Uh, the first part of the study that you see here on my screen we did it with 2,600 patients. So it's only for adults. And it's for 20, from 21 university hospitals. We basically defined the gold standard of three MSK radiologists because we wanted to have the best results possible. And for the FDA clearance, because we partnered with UH Cleveland to get it, we had 99% sensitivity per patient, 89% specificity per patient, and a negative predictive value of 99.6%. So a false negative rate of 0.4%. The second part of the study is time of analysis. So basically, we compared 24 different certified physicians using Revolve versus not using Revolve. And we did it with three different specialties. So eight MSK radiologists, eight non-MSK radiologists, and eight emergency physicians, because we know that all of them uh, can use the tool. So the figures we got are 67% of false negatives avoided and on average 27% of time saved. So this was in 2022. Today, the results are even better. It's above 35%. 
The second clinical study I want to talk about is for pediatric populations. Uh, this one is about the evaluation of RAVOL for the detection of appendicular fractures in children, and it's conducted with the hospital of Caen in Normandy. We basically did it on 800 patients under the age of 18 years old, and we defined the gold standard of 11 physicians. For the figures, we are at 95.6% sensitivity and 91.6% specificity. And for the negative predictive value, it's 98.7%. And as we've just seen, the benefits of AI and Revol are very real, which is why, thanks to our 16 million found round, our goal remains the same. So basically, we want to help more doctors and their patients around the world, whether for the doctors and their workflows or for the patient-centered care gaps. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Great to see the impact that your solution is having both in the US and in the UK. Now I'll pass on to Daniel, who will uh, go into the Gleamer solutions. Hi, everyone. Um, Dan at Gleamer here. Um, again, thanks to Blackford for um, hosting this webinar. And um, thanks, Gassan, for the um, very interesting um, session um, that you just presented uh, with some interesting case studies as well. Um, really positive to see the, the impacts of um, your AI in clinical practice. So um, what I'll do, similar kind of format, um, present um, Gleamer, what we do, um, and then also um, a theoretical case study, and then bone view in practice as well. So a little bit about Gleamer here. So we're, we're adopted worldwide, currently um, adopted in over 1,200 institutions across over 34 countries and processing roughly 50 million exams per year. Um, so incredibly wide scope. Um, with regards to our um, our AI adoption. We are incredibly committed to, to science, research, and um, innovation in AI within medical imaging. So we have over 50 clinical studies, 18 publications, and then we've won, won three notable awards as well, um, including awards from Aunt Minnie's and also the Alexander Margulis Award uh, that was presented to us at RSLA last year as well. You can see on the right hand side of the slide here, some of the notable locations that we've deployed across Europe um, and the, and one in the US there as well. Um, and also at the bottom of the screen, just some of the academic journals in which we've published papers in, including three studies in radiology now. So here just to present Gleamer's AI applications as part of Gleamer's AI co-pilot. Um, you can see here our X-ray applications on the left-hand side of the screen. So bone view covers bone trauma, chest view covers thoracic pathologies, bone metrics covers musculoskeletal measurements, and then bone age covers bone, um, bone age maturity as well. We are also developing new and novel technologies. Um, you can see breast view for MAMO and TOMO. And then Onco CT, which will potentially cover things like lung lesions and bone lesions on cross-sectional imaging. Currently, we have bone view and chest view deployed on Blackford's platform with bone metrics and bone age coming soon. We're also very happy um, to be deployed at Vesta Beacon with Philips, and um, I'm certainly looking forward to some interesting um, results out of out of Vesta Beacon soon. So here is bone view in practice. What I really wanted to do here is illustrate the the how the bone view application performs in a real world setting, and also how we can potentially change the work the workflow with the use of AI to bring and empower readers outside of radiology. So this was a study that was done at Rennes University Hospital in France, where Gleamer's bone view application is helping to reduce the time spent in emergency departments by up to, up to an over an hour for adults presenting with fractures, dislocations, effusions, and bone lesions. So as you can see, at Rennes University Hospital, they have a busy emergency department with over 67,000 ED visits in 2023. 
Eighteen percent of these visits were trauma related, requiring X-ray imaging for suspected musculoskeletal injuries. And the average wait time in ED exceeds four hours, four hours and 45 minutes to be exact, um, much like in the NHS, for example, overworked um, emergency departments, very busy. And the patients are the ones that have to um, unfortunately pay for those um, for that significant wait time. So the workflow is as follows. I'm sure you'll all be familiar with this. Patient visits the emergency department, x-rays are, are, require, are required, and the first read by a junior ED physician, second read by an e senior ED physician, and then the patient is either discharged or admitted. The standard protocol requires a senior doctor who has completed his training to analyze x-ray images as a means of ensuring that the in-house doctor's diagnosis is sound. This senior doctor has to give the go-ahead for a patient to be discharged from the hospital if there is no fracture found. That's where the bottleneck lies, unfortunately. It's not easy to find a senior doctor available um, for trauma in the emergency departments these days. So what we did with the help of the AI is we changed the pathway slightly, reducing the need for the second read by the senior ED physician. So removing this, um, this read, the second read, we are empowering the junior ED physicians with the AI to be better equipped to, to make more informed decisions to be able to discharge or admit patients with suspected musculoskeletal injuries either out of the hospital or or onto fracture clinic pathways for example and what that has done is that has led to a 27 percent reduction in ed wait time for positive patients a 21 percent reduction in ed wait time for negative patients and then a total average time saving of 70 minutes for the A&E wait time. So just some high level benefits of the Gleamers AI applications. So reduced report turnaround times, increasing the standard of care, reducing the time to discharge as seen in this liberation paper, and then reduction in the litigation costs as well. And then here are some references to support those to support those claims. So a 35% reduction in reading time, as we saw in the, the study previously, 25% increase in the fractures detected, 27% reduction in the total time to discharge, as seen in the paper that we just presented, and then a high negative predictive value of over 99.5%, which reduces misses with AI. So reducing the potential litigation costs that come with missed fractures. Thank you very much. Marcel, you're up next. Excellent. Uh, then let me start off by once again saying thank you for the opportunity to speak at this panel and for the invitation. And also thank you for uh, the speakers that came before me. Uh, it was very interesting presentations and it kind of showed what we also got as a feedback from the market when we were talking to our customers um, also at conferences that uh, slowly but surely uh, not just the doctors realize that um, there's a value in, in the usage of AI because there's more and more studies on it, uh, but also it keeps improving, which means um, the, the doctors, uh, the radiologists are now really they want to use software. So they, they start to trust um, AI software in, in the medical field. And I think that is that is great because it, it advances um, medicine for everyone. And I think that's a great benefit. So what do we do here at Image Biopsy Lab? So we strive to be a one-stop shop uh, solution for the MSK space, so to say. So we, we focus on, on measurements and scorings of um, the, the knee osteoarthritis, for example, hip measurements, bone age assessments, scoliosis measurements, and long leg measurements, as well as fractures um, that is actually powered by our friends from Denmark, Radiobotics, that you will hear uh, some more about uh, later in the presentation as well. And 
so far we heard the, the the previous speakers mainly mentioning radiologists but we also try to not only focus on the radiologists and improving the regular clinical workflow uh, for them but also for orthopedic surgeons and not just uh, their regular workflow as well but also trying to bridge the gap essentially between the radiologists and uh, the orthopedic surgeons so that is also one of our focuses here uh, one of our solutions so i will not go into detail for for um, our solutions uh, this one is llama so the the long leg measurement assistant here uh, essentially, what it does is length measurements, uh, angle measurements, and comparisons. Uh, if there's two legs visible in 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 the image, uh, always highlighting if there are abnormalities with deviations from the norm. And as you can see here on the image, uh, also with an implant support. So um, we picked this one because this was part of the um, study. So our solution was used by this study in the um, archives of orthopedic and trauma surgery um, with the title or the idea of um, check-in fully automated assessment of the knee alignment on long leg uh, radiographs following corrective knee osteotomies in patients with vulgus or varus deformities. And why was this done? Um, the Usually the, the assessment of a knee alignment on long leg radiographs, um, post-surgery specifically um, to, to corrective knee osteotomies, uh, it, it is highly dependent on the, the reader's expertise. So the, the intra-reader uh, differences are quite high. So having the opportunity and having the possibility to use artificial intelligence algorithms to to help automate and standardize this process um, is just extremely beneficial not just for the clinical but also for uh, the the research uh, part of um, medicine for radiology and for orthopedics so um, what was the study about uh, it, it aimed to analyze the reliability of AI algorithms, in, in this case, our algorithm, um, for the evaluation of the long leg radiographs um, following the knee, um, corrective knee osteo, um, osteotomies, um, including distal femoral, high tibial, and bilevel osteotomies. And uh, the, the study actually showed that the results um, of the AI-based measurements, um, they showed an excellent agreement with the manual reads, which means that AI-based software is actually quite well uh, versed for, for this type of, of studies and uh, measurements. It's highly reproducible, which means uh, that in contrast to humans, to human doctors, that if you send in the same image, so the same input image, you will get the same output image. So that is one of the biggest advantages that we should actually take advantage of, um, of computers. And of course, it is very quick, it is time saving. And yeah, that just shows that AI is, is very valuable, not just in the clinical use cases, but also in, in the term of research. And yeah, this was just one of the studies that was either done with the support of Image Biopsy Lab or done by us or using our software. Um, at the end, just one tiny, nice little slide about our publications in general, uh, because we end of last year actually made a, a bit of, of research. We, we we're digging into the publications, so the peer-reviewed publications in the um, MSK or rather ortho space uh, using actual usable AI software solutions um, in the past eight years. And out of those published and peer-reviewed um, publications and papers, uh, approximately or actually in this case, exactly 10% of them we're using our software uh, solutions or were done with and or by us. So that just goes to show how actually useful also in, in, in academic purposes, AI solutions in medicine can be 
and R. And yeah, at the end here, we, we also just linked the, the study if you are interested in reading it yourself. Thank you so much. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the panel. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marcel. We'll be on to Alexandra. Okay, so um, thank you very much uh, again for the, for the invitation. I'm Alexander, um, I'm legal director and a radiologist by training. Um, very interesting um, presentation from um, my colleagues uh, on this uh, subject of AI uh, in radiology. Um, I'll be discussing more or less uh, kind of the same uh, elements and uh, that's good news that we will share this uh, <laughs> These kind of uh, feedbacks from the field. Um, just to highlight uh, some key points about the the, the company. So Midview is a French-based uh, company, and um, since uh, 2018 now, um, we have been um, like uh, really uh, aware that AI will permanently and very positively impact. Um, the medical field and more specifically medical imaging. And so we, we went into this uh, field and um, our mission was uh, and is to uh, develop uh, innovative, efficient um, and impactful AI solutions. And also very importantly, to bring them into the field. So to integrate them um, as well as possible into the radiologist daily routine. So this is done either directly, but also through uh, all our partners, uh, and Blackfall is one of them. So um, this uh, integration helps to democratize the use of AI, not to replace radiologists, but to make them irreplaceable, irreplaceable for better and faster diagnosis and uh, patient management. Our solutions, um, as I said, they are very dedicated to X-ray workflows. Um, we have this... Um, philosophy to uh, build and develop AI solutions around radiological workflows. Um, as it was presented previously um, by one of my colleagues from IB Lab, um, dealing with orthopedic workflow, this is very important to um, place uh, radiologists inside a, a, a clinical workflow. And um, with our solutions, we deal, we tackle five uh, radiological workflows. Uh, first one is emergency workflow with a solution called Tech Care Alert. Um, also the MSK workflow, um, the thoracic imaging, the orthopedic workflow with spine measurements, most uh, specifically, and of course the pediatric imaging, which is one of the um, very important uh, use case in radiology where there is a lot of shortage of radiologists also. It's a very important use case. Um, on MSK uh, AI in radiology, which is uh, the automatic uh, spinal measurements. Um, this use case, uh, as you know, is very important because those kinds of measurements are, are really burdensome and highly time consuming for radiologists or for technicians and even for experts. Um, and uh, we demonstrated with the, this study uh, held at Marseille University Hospital in the south of France uh, over a hundred of full spine radiographs from adults and pediatrics um, that uh, we have with our solution a very good to excellent consistency with uh, on average less than five degree of errors uh, from the reference measurements. Um, this is interesting, even more interesting, not only for the performance, but what is the impact on the clinical workflow as it helps save depending on the clinician expertise and the, the and the, the use case between three and 12 minutes per patient. So this was a study, but this solution is up and running uh, in, in most of our clients um, today. And um, we have uh, this, uh, this quote from one of our partner and clients, um, expert in, in MSK radiology, um, confirming that it really helps save time, even for very experts. So this is a very, very important use case, which has been mentioned prior um, in, this, uh, in this panel, but uh, I wanted to emphasize through uh, this uh, publication. We have uh, a feedback from a site in Denmark, uh, in the Nordics, 
uh, they've been using the, the the solution and implementing the solution uh, at the healthcare organization level, and uh, they noticed. Uh, so this is the, the the solution for the emergency workflow this time, uh, and they noticed uh, that it helped reduce emergency waiting times by around one hour, and also they started noticing a reduction in the number of complaints and claims for incorrect fracture assessment. So this really demonstrates um, the, the impact that uh, those solutions can have for the radiologist to help save time, productivity, and focus on patients more. Um, but also what is important is not only uh, for the radiologist, it's also for the patient at the end and for the whole organization, the healthcare organization. Uh, and um, it's important to have feedbacks from the market, from your client, um, as, of course, uh, retrospective studies are really helpful to validate um, uh, AI solutions, but uh, it is important to gain trust from users, and uh, this is what uh, we have demonstrated uh, with our solution uh, over all our users. Thank you very much for um, your attention. And uh... thank you very much. All right, we'll pass on to Patrick now. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, as we've seen from the presentations today, very insightful from all the providers here, that there is a well defined need for diagnostic support for overpressured hospitals. And fracture detection is a very low hanging fruit relatively low risk entry point for a lot of hospitals where they can prove a quick return on investment. And also it's very easily integrated into their workflows where you can get quick adoption. And then this can help to aid in future adoption of AI within your hospital. So I'm gonna discuss our solution, RB Fracture and RB Knee and how those can enable that. We have two products. RB Fracture is our flagship product, which detects fractures and also lipohemothrosis and fusions, more secondary findings, as well as RB Knee, which is a knee osteoarthritis grading tool. RB Fracture covers the appendicular skeleton and uh, also, as I said, the secondary findings such as knee lipohemothrosis, uh, effusions, and it supports pediatrics, adults, and geriatrics. Here's an example of our output. It acts as a secondary capture within the PAX viewer. And anyone who's a radiologist here in the UK specifically would know the old red dot system that you used to use. So this is a feature that we've integrated and it receives quite good feedback because they can instantly see that there is a positive finding here. Here's another example where it's showing a doubtful fracture. So it also allows the clinician to play the part in making the uh, diagnosis. And then we have lipohemarthrosis, which is a unique feature of RB fracture. A newer version that we're releasing onto Blackford now also has an additional summary report as the first thumbnail. So this can be seen instantly by the clinician that there has been a positive finding and what cases there have been positives in. So it also greatly reduces the amount of images that are being sent to your packs that have a negative finding and only includes what you need to see. Here's an example of a work list that has been sorted based on the fracture detected or not. So for very busy emergency departments in particular, this is a very great feature that just helps their, them to make their work a lot more seamless. The study which I'm going to discuss today is new data that we've gotten from Kettering General Hospital in the UK. It's in the East Midlands. Typical example of an overworked, understaffed, busy ED where there was a very high missed fracture rate, which they wanted to address. So the last six months, they have been using RB Fracture in their emergency department, and they have just reported a 68% reduction in missed fractures in that time. So it's been hugely beneficial, especially for the more younger, inexperienced readers. It gives them a lot more confidence. And as you can see here, it's had quite a measurable impact in the amount of missed fractures, but also the amount of unnecessary referrals to fracture clinic. So it's also helping to reduce the amount of false positives in the department. 
and the sensitivity they've reported 94%. They've been very impressed with the software. And this just shows in a very everyday setting how this can make a big impact, regardless of the size of the hospital, whether you're a major university medical center to a local general hospital, as you see here. And we are making a white paper, which will currently be available on our website very soon. We also have a demo platform on our site, which I would uh, welcome you to try out. For people who think that AI is very complicated and to test, we have this here so that people can just go in, upload a JPEG, PNG, or DICOM file and instantly get the feedback. So we get this in hospitals where they'll send it on to the ED, they'll upload a couple of cases and instantly say, wow, that was very easy to use and we could understand it instantly. So this is a case here in Sweden where we sent the demo platform to a large hospital here. And they said that there were five cases where their seasoned radiologist missed fractures and RB fracture found the fracture in all cases. This is another clinic in Sweden. So this is a private clinic where they have only senior radiologists. So very important with all of the tools mentioned today is it will benefit everyone within radiology. It's not just the junior readers in the ED. It's also the more experienced readers, especially with, as you see here, these more subtle fractures, such as scaphoids, which are very difficult, even for the most seasoned of radiologists to detect. Our second product, RB Knee, is a knee osteoarthritis grading tool. So as you'll see here, the secondary capture makes a few measurements based on joint space narrowing, presence of osteophytes, sclerosis, and then it will make a knee osteoarthritis uh, grading based on the kelgren lorentz scale. So you have your structured report that's also included. This was a study that was done um, nearby here in Copenhagen, where they found that the tool had the same diagnostic capabilities as a senior consultant. And then in this case, one of the other benefits which we're trying to achieve with tools such as ours and all the others mentioned today is the unnecessary um, scanning that is done when you can't always detect the fractures in the first cases. So in this case, they were using RB knee as a tool where the patient came into the ED and then based on the findings of the AI, they would either send them for same day MRI or not. So in this case, in the case with Kettering, as you'd seen before, there was a significant reduction of these unnecessary referrals to an already understaffed um, department in the hospital. So that sums up what we do here at Radiobotics. Uh, thank you again to Blackford for setting up this uh, presentation today and for all the other presentations. I really hope that your hospital is able to adopt AI such as this soon and you see a great benefit from it. Thank you very much. And thank you all of the panel for providing an overview of your solutions and insight into how customers are using them uh, in MSK radiology today. Um, just to wrap up, I wanted us to talk about where you see the future of MSK radiology going. So uh, I'll kick off with some of my thoughts and you're welcome to agree or disagree with me afterwards. Um, but I see a trend towards more comprehensive AI tools, not just within MSK radiology, but more generally. Um, and I think personally that the aim of that is to allow ultimately down the line for auto reporting of certain cases. And the more comprehensive the tool is, the more analogous it is to the radiologist review, and then it leads to that auto reporting. Um, but that's just my opinion. So I'll uh, let you all have your say. So Gassan, if you want to kick off and then we'll just work our way around the panel. Right, thanks everyone for the presentations. It was uh, very good, uh, very insightful also. Uh, I think that we have the same aim here, and uh, we know that for sure AI is helping doctors. And at AZMed, we really believe that for the future, uh, our goal is to accompany them, their patients also. And that's why also we are invest investing a lot to develop new products, to also uh, optimize our uh, old products. And I really believe that even for the UK now, they are aware that AI is very useful. And we've seen in the in the last uh, few years that AI is gaining more and more uh, place in the industry. So I think that we have some good days coming. Thank you. Dan, what do you think? 
Um, it's a big question. Um, augmentation versus automation um, is the is the kind of grand challenge that everyone's facing at the moment. And um, I, I think you really um, hit the nail on the head, um, Dr. Deegan. It's um, I think we're now at a point in time where radiologists are looking to more comprehensive solutions. Um, I think, you know, in the UK, US, Europe, radiology is already deployed, sorry, radiology AI is already deployed in clinical practice, maybe not at the scale in which we would want it to be, um, but it's, it is getting there. And I think we are now moving away from the individual point solutions to a more comprehensive suite of AI. Um, and, you know, they're all complementing each other. So um, with that, I think there also has to be some sort of um, unification of the um, of the the work list, the user experience and user interface of the AI modules. Because I personally feel I don't think from the radiologists that I've spoken to in two, five, ten years' time, they want to be using different AIs with different user experiences, different interfaces. Um, because they're interacting with them all in, in, you know, different ways. They want it to be a seamless process. Um, so that's one of the, the things that we're kind of working towards. Um, and you would see with the with the new applications that we're gradually kind of bringing into the into the Gleam of Copilot, if you will, um, that we're trying to kind of push towards that unification um, and away from the individual point solutions. Um, so yes, the, the question of uh, augmentation versus automation, I I, I don't think we know I, yet. Um, I certainly know that Jeffrey Hinton's 2016 infamous comment is, uh, is is not quite the case. We're now you know more than five years on, and it's still we're we're still not um, we're still training new radiologists. Um, and so. But I do indeed think that there will be, be a degree of automation and then there will be a good degree of augmentation as well. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. Marcel, we'll get your thoughts. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I can honestly only agree with you and also with the previous speakers uh, because it honestly also kind of shows what we were saying, what I was also saying earlier in the presentation itself. So we also strive to standardize outputs so the doctors don't, um, as it was mentioned before, don't have to look at like single outputs at uh, from single solutions from multiple vendors that can be extremely tedious. And in my opinion, that just goes to show how important the platform like Blackfoot, for example, is um, the, the importance of that to have like one main, not just one main point of contact, but also one orchestrator uh, collecting the, the, the knowledge and, and the usability and, and function of different companies that have all the different strength, I would say. So, uh, of course, we all have similar solutions because after all, I mean, measurements are measurements, um, but the focus of, of our separate companies is slightly different. And this tiny difference um, just goes to show that we have strength in different um, fields, in, in different um, uh, body parts, for example, um, to, to say it bluntly. And um, for a doctor, for an institution to have the opportunity to have one single orchestrator that um, delivers a constant quality over the everything essentially, over all the solutions, over the whole body. Um, I think this is important and I think that is the future. Thank you. Great to hear it. <laughs> right, we'll pass on to Alexander. Yeah, I, I, I do agree. Um, uh, and thank you again for all your thoughts and comments. Um, I, I would insist on this uh, workflow point uh, that I wanted to, to, to highlight during my presentation. I think this is very important to understand. Um, there's the technology, 
um, and that's how it's supplied um, in the workflow. And so it's very important to understand uh, what is the workflow in each institution, in each country, and how it works. And um, I think that uh, the fact that fracture detection measurements works very well is because uh, I mean, get real traction from the the, the from the users is because it it tackles really a, a major pain point in their workflow. Um, it's high value, uh, it's high volume. Sorry, it's very low uh, added value uh, analyzing or measuring uh, X rays, and this is where AI has the most the more potential uh, right now. Um, and of course, it's going, I totally agree, it's going to be more and more comprehensive. And some of those tasks uh, that today uh, are presented on the image will be automatically reported. Uh, and then later, the radiologist will focus more on more complex cases, more multimodal cases. And MSK is also, and we should not forget that, is really a multimodal specialty. Um, X-ray is one thing, but it's really a, 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 one part of uh, MSK workflow. MSK is uh, MRI, ultrasounds, X-rays, and uh, CT scans, of course. So uh, all those solutions at some point, uh, they will need to address uh, different modalities for the same pathology for a comprehensive diagnosis. Uh, and this is where probably we all know the difficulty and uh, to, to develop those AI solutions, uh, to diffi the difficulty to make it uh, very uh, specific for like even tailor-made for every client. Um, and at some point uh, to have platforms that will aggregate uh, different solutions is also a very good uh, option for the end users. And this is, I believe our goal to satisfy the end users. Thank you. And Patrick, final thoughts? Yes, thank you. So as much as everyone likes to talk about the automation side of things, I think that it is also important to highlight that this is always a decision support tool and that the diagnostics will always have to be done by the clinician. Because if you're introducing AI to your hospitals, you will get pushback and you will have concerns that it is being implemented to replace someone. But as long as it's it's pitched in the right way and framed in that way, that it is there to help and support and make it faster for clinicians to make diagnoses, that's very important to highlight, I feel. And although I do see, as you're saying, a consolidation as well of all the different solutions, there is a lot of value in being a specialist in your area. That's why you have a platform such as Blackford, where you have so many different platforms that you can access or different solutions so that you can choose the solution that's correct for you. So I just want to say that, yes, I think that it's hard to know where the future lies with AI. I think that more and more it's being adopted and people are seeing the incredible uh, benefits we've seen in all the presentations today that hopefully it will become much more mainstream and people accept the values. And uh, yes, uh, that's basically on from my side. Thank you. Well, I think we're all excited to see what the future does hold and we can look back on this and see whether we are right in a few years time. <laughs> um, so thank you everyone for listening. Uh, and if you want to learn more about AI and MSK radiology, then please review our Bones of the Matter article, which is available on our website. And thank you very much for our panel for joining us today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.